I'm Karen Ewart, the founder and head of school at the Sycamore School. I'm a mom, a wife, a therapist, and a professional educator. All of who I am is why I'm opening the Sycamore School. I have two school-aged children, a son in sixth grade and a daughter in twelfth grade. After his first week in middle school, my son came home and unprompted said to me, Mom, why is it that in middle school teachers think that they don't have to be creative? My heart about broke. This is one of the reasons I'm creating the Sycamore School. When teaching middle and high school students, we shouldn't lose our freedom to teach creatively, connect to our students, and our love of learning. Learning still needs to be fun, engaging, and we need to connect to each student and find the hook to make learning come alive for them. Both my children had wonderful elementary school experiences, but as they started middle school and moved into high school, I saw some trends that concerned me. Scripted teaching. Public school teachers are instructed to teach to the SOLs. As a result, they're teaching with their hands tied behind their back, and it limits their ability to teach creatively and differentiate instruction. Large class size and short class times give teachers and students limited ability to develop positive and personalized relationships with one another. In addition, many of our high schools have turned into pressure cookers, where the onus is on getting exemplary grades and taking an unrealistic amount of advanced classes, putting undue stress on many of our children, causing a multitude of mental health issues. I want to address the flaws I see in our mainstream schools. I want to create a healthy educational environment for teachers and students. I want to bring joy, excitement, and creativity back into learning. I want to focus on what's important, teaching our kids how to think, how to learn, and how to take ownership of their learning. Some students do well in a mainstream school setting, and our public schools have a tremendous amount of resources available to them. However, there are other students who need something different. I began to see a need that I think we could fill, a need to provide a small community school that focuses on personalized experiential learning. So what does that mean? What is experiential learning? Experiential learning means learning by doing. According to Linda Lewis and Carol Williams, who wrote the article Experiential Learning Past and Present, experiential education first immerses learners in an experience and then encourages reflection about the experience to develop new skills, new attitudes, and new ways of thinking. In his 2005 book, Using Experiential Learning in the Classroom, Scott Werdiger explained that experiential learning is also built upon a foundation of interdisciplinary and constructivist learning. Interdisciplinary means we don't teach subjects in isolation because that doesn't reflect the real world. We want to create a classroom learning experience that mimics real world learning. Constructivist learning means outcomes of the learning process vary and are often unpredictable, and learners play a critical role in assessing their own learning. So how one student chooses to solve a problem will be different from another student and what one student takes away from an experience will be different from the others. According to Next Generation Learning Challenges, experiential and problem-based learning, also called authentic or real-world learning, helps students apply core content to the real world. Curriculum is built on inquiry, project-based learning, field studies, and service learning so that students directly see the relevance of academic content and develop essential skills such as critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. This graph outlines some key fe features of experiential learning, what it is and what it is not. 
Experiential learning includes teaching both content and process. Teachers balance facilitating experiential activities with teaching the underlying content or theory. It's important to note that experiential activities are structured, purposeful, and include a reflection piece after the activity, allowing students to reflect, debrief, and evaluate what they've just experienced. It's not just letting students do whatever they want. Experiential activities allow the students to make connections between the learning they're doing and the world versus teaching subjects in isolation. Activities should cultivate the ability to see relationships in complex systems and find a way to work within them. Ongoing self-assessment is important. We want students to understand what and why they're learning something. And if they're struggling, feeling comfortable asking questions and making sure they understand concepts. Experiential learning also encourages students to learn outside their perceived comfort zones, to open up their world and feel comfortable trying new things and taking risks. Learning is pers personable, purposeful, and personalized. Teachers create a safe place for students to work through their own process of self-discovery. So what does experiential learning look like at the Sycamore School? At the Sycamore School, we have three roots that are equally important and impact one another. Academic development, socio-emotional growth, and civic engagement. Academic development at the Sycamore School starts with teaching content knowledge, but it doesn't end there. We teach students how concepts are connected across content areas and how to apply what they're learning to real world situations, incorporating 21st century learning skills and literacies. 21st century learning skills include critical thinking and creative problem solving skills. 21st century literacies include financial literacy, economic literacy, technology literacy, and global awareness. So how do we do this? We start with incorporating universal design for learning. Universal design for learning provides a framework for understanding how to create curricula that meets the needs of all learners. We give students choices of how content is presented, how they work with the material, and how they demonstrate mastery. Students can work at their own pace, enabling students to spend more time on concepts when they need to, and offering accelerated learning when appropriate. We also regularly offer project-based learning or transdisciplinary learning, where the teachers and students come together and choose a high-interest project that brings together all the core subjects. For example, they may do a project on roller coasters, where students study the history of roller coasters, the utility of using metal, plastic, or wood materials, how to structure a roller coaster and actually build one. This brings together language arts, math, science, and social studies concepts and activities. For students who are not at grade level in a certain subject or have gaps in their learning, we offer foundations courses in reading, writing, and math. Social and emotional growth includes helping students increase their self-awareness, learning how, learning how to more effectively relate to others, and how to connect to the world around them. We do that by explicitly giving students tools to self-regulate so that when they're upset, angry, or disengaged, they can recognize that and know what to do to reset, get back on track, and be more available for learning. We not only have regular opportunities for students to collaborate, but we actually teach our students how to work effectively in a group, helping them recognize different roles, what they tend to gravitate to, and how to navigate different personalities and aptitudes. We also provide regular mindfulness practice. For example, every day between our movement class and their core classes, 
we have a five minute mindfulness exercise to help students transition from a high energy activity to a more sedentary one. Each student also is part of an advisory group comprised of a, fall, a small group of students and a teacher. They meet daily to check in, touch base, and address any questions, problems, or stressors. This is also a good place to offer executive functioning skills support. We also recognize that students are social beings and that in middle school they're experiencing all sorts of physical and emotional changes related to their development. In middle school, development is the elephant in the room. In most schools, it's not adequately addressed. At the Sycamore School, we want to talk about and normalize adolescent development, helping students understand why they may have mood swings, changes in their energy levels, and fluctuation in their attention, and how to effectively manage those fluctuations in themselves and others. We also want to teach resiliency. We believe that schools should open up our students' minds and broaden their experiences. We want our school community to be a safe place where students are comfortable trying new things, making mistakes, and even failing. We learn the most when we're able to successfully work through a challenging experience. Civic engagement includes developing community awareness, civic literacy, and global awareness. We want to increase our students' awareness of the resources in our community and how to access those resources. For example, if your sewer is overflowing, who do you call? If you find a dog lost in your neighborhood, what local organizations take in strays? We had a recent election. Most of our children know at least a little bit about the role of the president, but do they understand what the difference is between a state senator and a U.S. one? Do they know the function of our county board? Do they understand their rights as citizens? We also want our students to discover how to become more involved in their community. We'll have regular school-wide community service projects, but we want those projects to be meaningful and purposeful. We want students to think about their interests and how they can use those interests to give back to their community. For example, if several of our students are close to their grandparents, would they be interested in starting a buddy program with a local retirement community where they can either read to their elders, play cards with them, or teach them computer literacy? If many of our students love to read, they could look into coordinating a book drive to collect books for underserved communities. The Sycamore School embraces an urban school model. That means that we'll utilize resources in our community to augment what we don't have on site. Being located in Boston, we're walking distance from the metro and five local parks. There are countless resources around us. So as a school community, we will explore those resources and learn more what not only Arlington, but Northern Virginia, DC, and Maryland have to offer us to enhance our learning. As a small community, it's easy for us to hop on the metro to visit a museum or walk to a local creek. If we're studying the Berlin Wall, why wouldn't we go to the museum to actually see a part of the Berlin Wall? If we're studying gems, why wouldn't we go to the National History Museum to see their amazing collection? Structured field studies help make learning come alive. Here's a copy of our sample weekly schedule. You'll notice that students start with movement every morning. I believe it's important for students to start their day moving their bodies. The purpose of the movement class is exploration. I want students to be exposed to a variety of movement activities in the hopes that they discover at least a few that they really enjoy. Activities may include yoga, hip hop dance, and Pilates, as well as ultimate frisbee, rock climbing, soccer, and basketball. Each activity will last two to three weeks. So if they don't enjoy a particular sport or game, they won't have to do it for too long. However, however, if they do like an activity, it could become an after-school club or intramural sport. For electives, students can choose from Spanish, foundations classes, or an elective sampler, which will give students a taste of several electives. 
It will be a six-week rotation of electives such as woodworking, computer coding, improv, visual arts class, music, and filmmaking. We'll be outsourcing for some of our electives and it gives us a chance to try partnerships with various outside organizations and see which electives students enjoy the most. In future years we can expand to semester or year-long electives. You'll also notice that Wednesdays are dedicated to transdisciplinary learning, which is another word for project-based learning. On Wednesdays, we also have school-wide community meeting and arts-based electives to give students additional opportunities to explore some high-interest electives. Fridays are dedicated to community-based instruction. On Fridays, we'll either be going to on field studies engaging in community service activities, or bringing the community to the school, hosting speakers or other high interest guests. Pending parent and student interest will also offer after school clubs, where outside groups such as Educational Theater Company will come to our school to offer students enrichment programs, such as improv, comedy, or filmmaking club. This is an overview of some of the key features of the Sycamore School. At the Sycamore School, we offer personalized learning because we want to find the hook for every student to engage them and help them perform up to their potential. It's also important to note that we recognize the importance of relationships and will focus on building an inclusive, nurturing, and diverse community, um, a community of learners who support and respect one another. We want to foster collaboration, communication, and celebrating differences versus promoting excess competition and divisiveness. One of the hallmarks of our philosophy is flexibility. We welcome and encourage parent and student feedback and want to build our program around our students and their unique talents, interests, and aptitudes. At the Sycamore School, we're intentionally recruiting a cross-section of students. Students with a Montessori background would do well at the Sycamore School because they already have many of the attributes we're cultivating, such as independence, initiative, and creativity. We would be a good fit for students who need to move around or would like choices of how they work with concepts and demonstrate mastery. We do accept students with learning and attentional struggles. Other applicants may be surviving but not really thriving in their current learning environment. We're looking for students who are bright, curious, and craving a more personalized, engaging, and dynamic learning community. Admissions is open and we're currently ex accepting students for the 2017-2018 school year. Our inaugural class will include students grades 6 through 8 and will expand with our students through the 12th grade. If you're interested in enrolling your child or learning more about the Sycamore School, please call or email to make an appointment. We'd love to meet with you, learn more about your child, and answer any questions. The admissions process is outlined in detail on our website. We also have some upcoming events that I'd like to tell you about. Starting later this month, we'll be holding open houses. We'll be featuring pop-up classrooms where our teachers will be leading some hands-on activities, giving prospective students a taste of what it's like to learn at the Sycamore School. Parents can either observe student activities or talk to the staff about the curriculum. Here are some upcoming open house dates and the location. This information can also be found on our website along with registration. We're also excited to announce that we'll be launching a summer program, Camp Sycamore. We'll be running week-long summer camps featuring high-interest activities for tweens, such as creating perpetual motion machines, a creative writing workshop, cooking, and arts activities please be on the lookout for our summer brochure and online registration. 
If you'd like to learn more about the Sycamore School, please visit our website or go to our Facebook page. That concludes um, my portion of the presentation. And now I'm going to open it up to questions. And it looks like we have a couple of them. First one is... My moderator is going to tell me the questions. <laughs> First one is, um, how does your model fulfill mandated state documentation and other requirements? From Dr. Fashion. Fulfill mandated state documentation and other requirements. So how does our, the question is, how does our model fulfill mandated, ma mandated state, documentation and state other. documentation requirements and other requirements? Um, that's an interesting question. So in terms of, we're following Common Core um, in terms of our learning strands. Um, we're actually incorporating five different curricula. Um, it includes 21st century learning skills, universal design for learning, Common Core standards, Castle socio-emotional um, curricula, and mindful schools. So in terms of academic content, we will be following Common Core. Um, Virginia follows SOLs, uh, standards of learning, um, but Common Core and SOLs are actually quite similar. So um, we basically will have a rubric of learning um, strands and students will start, um, they'll know where they begin and how they're progressing throughout the school year. Okay. The next question is, how do you integrate students with disabilities, including learning disabilities, ADHD, and related comorbidities? Okay. The question was, how do we accommodate students with learning disabilities, um, and it sounded like other learning struggles like ADHD. So basically each student has an individualized curriculum and it can look a little different um, in each classroom. But for example, our language arts teacher uses a layered curriculum um, with menus. So each student has their own individualized activities that they do. Um, we can certainly also look at um, any documentation that comes with our students in terms of accommodations um, and IEPs. Um, but we basically work with the parent, the student, the family um, to make sure that they have the accommodations that they need and actually to help the students understand their disability and to eventually take ownership of that, be able to advocate for themselves and to be able to access um, what they need to be successful. Uh, the next question is uh, if you can reiterate where the school is located and class size uh, initially and long term. Sure. The question was where's the school located and class size. So we are going to be in the Boston area of Arlington um, in an office building. Um, so we'll be on the an office building that's near, um, right near the Holiday Inn and off the entrance and exit to I-66. Um, so it will be an urban school model. We, in terms of class size, our ratio is one to seven. So, but initially um, it will probably be smaller, one to five. Are there any other okay, questions? There's no other questions? Unless people want to ask them. Yep. Can if, there are, if you have any additional questions, um, you can type them in now. Good questions. So if you attended this webinar, we will follow up with more information. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Oh, there is another question. There's two more questions. Oh, wow. There's more questions coming in. Just a how, second. How do you accommodate accelerated learners? How do we accommodate accelerated learners? Good question. So we do what's called um, competency-based learning, and it means that learning is self-paced. So when stu students are learning new content, 
they're working at their own pace so they can go um, as slow or as quickly as they need to and so it's actually very easy to accommodate accelerated learners because as soon as they demonstrate mastery of a subject they can move on okay um, if there's any additional questions feel free to type them in Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, you can reach out via email um, if you have additional questions. If you're interested in learning more about the school, um, you can make an appointment to meet with me individually, or I encourage people to come to our open houses as well um, to meet our teachers. Thank you so much, and have a great week.